Hatred towards my country was at an all-time high. We had an illegitimate president who used fear to push his illegal acts, all the while leaving our nation holding the bag. Biological weapons, anthrax, botulinum toxin, sarin, mustard, and VX nerve agent. Nuclear weapons production. He had shredded our Constitution while flipping his nose at the rest of the world. He had ran our economy in the ground while all of his friends got richer. This is an impressive crowd, the haves and the have-mores. <laughs> Some people call you the elite. I call you my base. <laughs> yes, this man was merely a puppet for the international business cartels, but the world viewed him as the poster child for every American citizen and held us responsible for his actions. He joked and chuckled at all the torture and deaths of the innocents at his hands. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> Most of us, as well as the rest of the world, were ready to see this man go. And then came Obama, the man who fooled the world. On November 4th, 2008, Barack Hussein Obama was elected as the 44th President of the United States of America, and the people rejoiced. The celebration rang out around the world. Barack Hussein Obama, I do solemnly swear. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. That I will execute the office of President to the United States faithfully. That I will execute the off faithfully the, pres the office of President of the, the United States. The office of President of the United States faithfully. And will to the best of my ability. And will to the best of my ability. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. Preserve, protect, and defend the Constitution of the United States. So help you God. So help me God. Congratulations, Mr. President. <laughs> being sworn in, Obama grabbed the bull by the horns, pushing full steam ahead on his promises, requesting a temporary halt to get more trials, and a new dawn of government transparency. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this presidency. During this period of economic emergency, families are tightening their belts, and so should Washington. He got to see his new office, and in private, read the letter that Bush Jr. had left him addressed, 244 from 43. He had meetings aimed at getting our economy back on track. Bringing our troops home. He even called Israel and the Palestinians to speak about resolving the Gaza conflict. He was on a roll. You know, these kinds of moments come around just every so often. Uh, the American people are really counting on us now. The next day, Obama elected to say his oath again because of the previous day's slip-up. White House counsel Greg Craig called it an abundance of caution. He then signed some executive orders, one being Executive Order 13490, Ethics Commitments by the Executive Branch Personnel. Lobbyist gift ban, revolving door bans on lobbyists entering and leaving positions in our government. Closing the ancestral revolving door between the big business and government sounds like a really good idea to me. I mean, this guy's on it. The very next day, he signs the executive order to close Gitmo within 12 months. The first executive order that we are signing uh, by the authority vested in me as president of the, uh, 
President by the Constitution and the laws of the United States of America in order to affect the appropriate disposition of individuals currently detained by the Department of Defense at Guantanamo uh, and promptly to close the detention facility at Guantanamo consistent with the national security and foreign policy interests of the United States and the interests of justice I hereby order. And we then provide uh, the process whereby Guantanamo will be closed uh, no later than one year from now. We will be, uh, is there a separate uh, executive order, Greg, with respect to how we're going to dispose of the detainees? Is that it, uh, written? We, have a process. we will be setting up a process uh, whereby this is going to be taking place. Uh, the j individuals who are standing behind me uh, represent uh, flag officers who came to both Joe and myself uh, and all the candidates uh, and made a passionate plea that we restore uh, the standards of due process and the, the core constitutional values that have made this country great, uh, even in the midst of war, even in dealing with terrorism. They made an extraordinary impression on me. Uh, they are outstanding Americans who have fought uh, and defended this country, and for them to fight on behalf of our constitutional ideals and values, I think, is exceptional, so I wanted to make sure that they were here to witness the signing of this executive order. There we go. He went on to sign the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act of 2009 in which he said there would be no benchmarks. Launched his health care campaign. Chairs a UN Security Council meeting to show that he means business going on to winning the Nobel Peace Prize. And everywhere he went, tens of thousands of people would come from miles and miles around just to catch a glimpse of change. Today, as the presidential election is approaching rapidly, the country seems a lot different than what was promised three and a half years ago. Obama's approval decline paints the picture of broken promises. He dropped from his 70% approval rating in his first three months to 44.4% at the end of his third year. Gitmo is still opened and operational three years after his executive order to close it. Heck, they even just recently finished building a $750,000 taxpayer soccer field there. He had campaigned on transparency of government and the protection of privacy for all U.S. citizens. But we've watched a different story unfold over the last few years as he has extended the Patriot Act twice. President Barack Obama has signed a one-year extension of several provisions in the nation's main counterterrorism law, the Patriot Act. They would have expired on Sunday. They authorized court-approved roving wiretaps to permit phone surveillance. They also allowed the seizure of records and property in anti-terror investigation. He signed the National Defense Authorization Act of 2012, which allows for the indefinite detention of U.S. citizens. Ten years after 9-11, in the wake of the demise of Osama bin Laden, the only leader that al-Qaeda has ever known, and we're passing a provision that would codify the indefinite detention without trial of suspected enemies of the state. And that includes, as you mentioned, American citizens apprehended here on U.S. soil. We have not codified indefinite detention without trial since the McCarthy era. That's how extreme this is. He said he did it with reservations, adding a signing statement that he has the power to detain Americans, but claims he won't. He signed the National Defense Resources Preparedness Executive Order, giving him the authority to commandeer all domestic U.S. resources, food, water, infrastructure, energy and transportation, and forcibly draft American citizens into the military. 
He has extended the time the National Counterterrorism Center can collect and hold on to records of U.S. citizens and residents for 180 days, which Bush had enacted, to five years, even where those people have no suspected ties to terrorism. He signed Bill H.R. 347, which gives a whole new meaning to the term free speech zone, as there will be none near what the government deems restricted buildings or grounds, disrupt the orderly conduct, basically protest, of government business or official functions. This would include events like the RNC, the DNC, or other gatherings where people would want to use their First Amendment right to voice their discontentment to the people they're discontent with. In today's America, even hugging and dancing at a national monument is no longer tolerated and will be treated like a national security risk. We watch the TSA at airports and train stations abuse its powers, continuing to harass seniors, children, infants, and the disabled, knowing full well that they are not terrorists. Obama has done nothing about this. We've also watched how he reacts to national disasters like the BP oil spill. The United States government has always been in charge of making sure that the response is appropriate. But make no mistake, BP is operating at our direction. Every key decision and action they take must be approved by us in advance. And as we devise strategies to try and stop this leak, we're also relying on the brightest minds and most advanced technology in the world. We're relying on a team of scientists and engineers from our own national laboratories and from many other nations. A team led by our energy secretary and Nobel Prize winning physicist, Stephen Chu. that first day. Those who think that we were either slow on our response or lacked urgency don't know the facts. This has been our highest priority since this crisis occurred. And we understood from day one the potential enormity of this crisis and acted accordingly. focused on how do we stop the leak and how do we prevent and mitigate the damage to our coastlines. Any major decision that they make has to be done under the approval of Thad Allen, the National Incident Coordinator. 
So this notion that somehow the federal government is sitting on the sidelines and for the last three or four or five weeks, three or four or five weeks, three or four or five weeks, no, no thanks. We watched Obama give away our money to companies like Solyndra Solar, a big Obama campaign donor, who turned around and went bankrupt after getting over a half a billion dollars. He first tried blaming Bush. Uh, Solyndra, uh, this is a loan guarantee program that predates me. Then later, he said that he had no regrets about giving them the money. Do you regret that? No, I don't. His administration has armed Mexican drug cartels with guns from U.S. gun stores in the Fast and Furious sham to Bush gun control. When did you first know about the program, officially, I believe, called Fast and Furious? To the best of your knowledge, what date? I'm not sure of the exact date, but I probably heard about Fast and Furious for the first time over the last few weeks. He says over the last few weeks, that is on May 3rd, 2011. Listen to this interview the President of the United States, not the Attorney General, the President of the United States, had with CNN Espanol back in March. There have been problems. Uh, you know, uh, I heard on the news about this story that uh, Fast and Furious, uh, where uh, allegedly uh, guns were being run into Mexico and ATF knew about it but didn't uh, apprehend those who had, uh, who had sent it. Eric Holder, has, the Attorney General, has been very clear that he knew nothing about this. We've assigned a, uh, a uh, IG, uh, Inspector General, to investigate it. While allowing drug cartels to move tons of cocaine into our country for information on rival drug cartels. He got his Obamacare passed, and even though its constitutionality is in the Supreme Court's hands now, and the decision is not expected until this summer, gave the IRS a half a billion dollars to enforce it. So there's, there's not only an economic element to this, and a legal element to this, but there's a human element to this. Uh, and I hope that's not forgotten uh, in this political debate. Uh, ultimately, I'm confident that the Supreme Court will not take what would be an unprecedented, extraordinary step of overturning uh, a law that was passed by uh, a strong majority of uh, a democratically elected Congress. Many federal district judges have already ruled that Congress has no authority to force Americans to buy a particular product such as health care. Obama has claimed to have directed the assassination of Osama bin Laden, who had been reportedly dead years before, but won't show a shred of evidence that he's dead. You will not see bin Laden walking on this earth again. And with that, the White House says the world will just have to take their word for it. Uh, keep in mind that we are absolutely certain this was him. We've done DNA uh, uh, sampling uh, and testing. Uh, and, and so there is no doubt that we killed uh, Osama bin Laden. Uh, it is important for us to make sure that gr very graphic photos of somebody who was shot in the head uh, are not floating around uh, as uh, an incitement to additional violence, as a propaganda tool. Uh, you know, that's not who we are. His administration has supported revolutions in other countries, which led to military rule, the killing of a once ally, Muammar Gaddafi, while aiding Al Qaeda in Libya and aiding them again in this Syria. That's exactly what they did in Libya. Don't forget that Libya is now, liberated Libya is now a country run by militias. 250 at least in Misrata, and I would say at least 40 or 50 in Tripoli itself. And the military commander of Tripoli is a former Al-Qaeda asset. They've been working together since, I would least for the past 10 months at least in Libya, and for the past three or four months at least in, in Syria as well. It's the same modus operandi. But I guess since the Obama administration declared that the war on terror was over, and that we had won, Al-Qaeda must be on our side now.
Well, the war against sick people still continues, even though Obama and his administration had said. When it comes to medical marijuana, I, I, I have more of a practical view than anything else. I mean, my attitude is, is that if, uh, if it's an issue of doctors prescribing medical marijuana as a uh, treatment for glaucoma or as a cancer treatment, I think that should be appropriate because there really is no difference between that and a doctor prescribing morphine or anything else. Well, what the president said during the campaign, um, you'll be su surprised to know, will be consistent with what uh, we'll be doing here in law enforcement. Uh, <laughs> Uh, he was uh, my boss during the campaign. He is formally and technically and by law my boss now. And so what he said during the campaign will is now um, American policy. But this is what they have done since then. And remember those lobbyists he supposedly banned from his administration? Well, he hired them anyway in at least a dozen high-profile positions, including several in his cabinet. For a guy who campaigned on the anti-Bush platform, he sure has continued Bush's policies in overdrive. And the thing that gets me the most is how people still defend this guy. These have to be people who have never read the first bill this guy has signed or the first executive order this guy has signed other than the candy-coated titles. Or is it really that hard to see that this guy is as bad, if not worse, than the last guy? That the face men and women are nothing but puppets fooling the world into thinking that they're looking out for our best interests they're not. And if you yourself read past the colorful titles, you will see this. It's a fact. P.S. I wasn't fooled at all. He had meetings aimed at getting our economy back on track. Bringing our troops home. He even called Israel and the Palestinians to speak about resolving the Gaza conflict. He was on a roll. You know, these kinds of moments come around just every so often. Uh, the American people are really counting on us now. The next day, Obama elected to say his oath again because of the previous day's slip-up. White House counsel Greg Craig called it an abundance of caution. He then signed some executive orders, one being executive order. On November 4, 2008, Barack Hussein Obama was elected as the 44th president of the United States of America, and the people rejoiced. The celebration rang out around the world. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do I, Barack, solemnly swear. I, Barack Hussein Obama, do solemnly swear. That I will execute the office of President to the United States faithfully. And I will execute the off faithfully the, the office of president of the United States. The office of president States, of the United States faithfully. 
and will to the best of my ability and will to the best of my ability preserve protect and defend the constitution of the united states preserve protect and defend the constitution of the united states so help you god so help me god congratulations mr president All the best wishes. After being sworn in, Obama grabbed the bull by the horns, pushing full steam ahead on his promises, requesting a temporary halt to get more trials, and a new dawn of government transparency. Transparency and the rule of law will be the touchstones of this presidency. During this period of economic emergency, families are tightening their belts, and so should Washington. He got to see his new office, and in private, read the letter that Bush Jr. had left him addressed, 244 from 43. I call you my base. <laughs> yes, this man was merely a puppet for the international business cartels, but the world viewed him as the poster child for every American citizen and held us responsible for his actions. He joked and chuckled at all the torture and deaths of the innocents at his hands. Those weapons of mass destruction got to be somewhere. <laughs> Most of us, as well as the rest of the world, were ready to see this man go. And then came Obama, the man who fooled the world. Hatred towards my country was at an all-time high. We had an illegitimate president who used fear to push his illegal acts, all the while leaving our nation holding the bag. Biological weapons, anthrax, botulinum toxin, sarin, mustard, and VX nerve agent. Nuclear weapons production. He had shredded our Constitution while flipping his nose at the rest of the world. He had ran our economy in the ground while all of his friends got richer. This is an impressive crowd, the haves and the have-mores. <laughs> Some people call you the elite. 